right back, investigating unbelievable shopping mall scams. Getting your ears pierced at the mall is a rite of passage for many. But are there hidden dangers that you ought to know about? A whistleblower speaks out about what really goes on at the quick and convenient mall piercing kiosk. I worked at for three years on any given day, especially Saturday when it was busy. You could have up to six ear piercings, if not more, back to back. So the guns weren't properly cleaned in between each piercing. They were supposed to be sanitized down with an alcohol pad, and they weren't. And one time, a coworker of mine was piercing a little girl. She had to be about seven. The little girl pulled up the earring, it dropped on the floor. She just put the earring up and popped it back on the girl's ear, didn't clean it. Hearst Chief National Consumer Correspondent Jeff Rosson is back along with dermatologist Dr. Janine Downey. Jeff looked into the piercing industry and said one of the biggest things that caught his attention was the amount of training that people get to do these procedures. So how much is it roughly? Yeah, at a professional spot, what they should be getting is six months of training. That's sort of the industry standard. We found that at these mall kiosks, sometimes they're getting two weeks of training. And then it's like, you got it. Go for it. Two weeks of training versus six months, which is what they should be getting. Yeah, see one, do one, teach one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so, that's what they say in medicine, no. kiddingly, of course. Yeah. So what are the areas of the ear that you were worried about? They're challenging. We, right. take, we take it for granted, but piercing is not always equally su sufficient. And if you're not trained, you can make mistakes. Exactly. So this is the most common area on the lobe of the ear where people get pierced a lot, okay? So you can still have issues here, but there's less issues. Up here... Towards the top, the conch of the air up here, you can, you, there's less blood supply up here. There's more cartilage up here. There's more of a risk of infection, pain, swelling, and even necrosis, which means tissue cells are dying up there. So that's a problem. People pierce here, they pierce here, they pierce all over the place. All of those places can be fraught with issues and fraught with problems. Not to Absolutely. put you on the spot for this, it's not the main topic today, but for your children, mm -hmm. Would you allow them to pierce these parts of the ear? No, I would not. My daughter has a piercing right here, and that's it, and that's all. I, well, just as a reminder. Okay, so here's some pictures to show examples of the kinds of infections that are generally caused by an ear piercing. This is an infected earlobe, right? You see the redness down there. Right. right? It's inflamed. And this is someone's cartilage. I mean, does that look painful to you guys? Oh. Okay. And this one really got my attention. It's a keloid that formed. And certain people, not just African Americans, can right. have reactions to piercings. And this is an example. It's the front and the back of the ear. Same, same ear. Exactly. Exactly. And those are what we call dumbbell keloids. And they, they, they're they called dumbbell because they're on both sides or because you're dumb sides. for having had it done? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's because there's a business. Right. Right. You don't have to answer every question. All right. He'll be here all week, folks. <laughs> exactly. Try the corned beef. All right. The Jeff says there's several ways yeah. someone can get infected just by the tools. Yeah, look, it's all about sterilization, right? I mean, that's where a lot of these infections come from. So. These type of guns that the metal comes in contact with the ear, yep. they're just prone to problems. So you got to make sure that they're sterilizing. So these let me just show you this. So, if you, if you do, so the, this, the, this, this uh, earring goes yep. inside of this, but right. this is touching your ear every time. And That's so right. it has to be sterilized. So it yeah, has here. to be sterilized, yep. or else it's not going to be sufficient. Are they exactly. doing that? How can you tell they're doing that? I love this. I love this because they're now making these sort mm -hmm. of one-time only. Mm -hmm. Cartridges yeah. that single, you plug right in. Single use cartridges. Single use cartridges yeah. that you plug into the space and you can watch them open it up and it's sealed. You can see it's sealed mm -hmm. and that's how you know. That's great. And, these and, are they, and they come out looking like this and you fire it. You can sort of see that. Right. It just fires once, boom, yeah, you're done. Right in there. You can just use a sterile needle too. Yeah. You can use a sterile needle. It's more free form. Um, quite frankly, the American Piercing Association came up with this thing where they like these better than they like these. They were talking about blunt trauma to the ear and shattering the earlobe and uh, things that I don't particularly agree with. In my office, we do it with either this or we do it with that, but we have sterilization equipment upstairs in my office. Actually, that, that, that went viral, that yeah. post you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah there was about, a Facebook post yeah. where somebody right. said that you can have your ear shattered, your cartilage shattered, and yeah. blunt force trauma to your ear. Is that true? No. I mean, if each way is trauma, and that is not true. That's not what the American Academy of Dermatology thinks but, at but all. But doctors do piercings. Yes, we do piercings. We do piercings in the office, and they're roughly about the same price as the mall. So better to come see a board-certified dermatologist or plastic surgeon that knows what they're doing. And you can deal with the complication yeah, if it happens. Exactly. Of interest, the Association of Professional Piercers has spoken out strongly against the use of guns. Okay, Dr. Dan is going to pierce someone right now and show us what it's like as it's being done, since you have so much experience doing these. This is Carol. And Carol, you've actually had a piercing experience. What was it like? Um, I, it was at a freestanding store, and right shortly after, I got uh, my ears got infected, and so I never really oh. put them back in. Was that a long time ago? Uh, it, was, it was back in the 80s. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness, that was a lot of emotional <laughs> trauma. It took 40 years to come back. Yes. All right, so here for the first time on the Dr. Oz Show, we're going to take you through this. So explain what so you're up to. We have numbing paste on her ears right now, and so we've already marked her ears, and so we're just going to wipe the numbing paste off with um, a antiseptic, so you want to make sure that the area is clean. And then we mark it, and after we mark it, we show the patient. So typically I would have an assistant showing. Um, Carol, do you like that right there? Yes. We kind of agreed upstairs mm -hmm. before. Then you swing that back down. I would never have thought of that. Dropping. We, we have to show them. I like to take pictures, actually, as I go along. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm taking the picture is to make sure that they're okay with it. And then I take the picture. Thank you, Dr. Oz. I'll, I'll mention in your resume thing that Thank you're a you. perfect assistant. Mm -hmm. And then ready? Ooh. You okay? Yeah. Okay. That was it. And we're done. And we're done. Was that okay? It's super yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Was it worth easy. waiting 40 years for? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right, you get after care instructions. Okay. You know, yeah, all that stuff. After instructions. There's an antibiotic ointment everybody goes home with. They have to clean their ears at least four times a day. They have to twist the earrings, sleep on their back, no dirty cell phones. And a lot of people have allergies to different antibacterials over the counter. So make sure you don't have an allergy. I checked before. She only has one allergy. Nothing she was allergic to. They need to ask you for allergies. Critical information. You want the other ear done now or 10 years from now? <laughs> now. <laughs> right. we'll, do, we'll do that. Next we'll do generation. <laughs> Jeff, thanks very much. Great reporting as always, Dr. Dowdy. Thank you very we'll much. We'll be right Thank back. You. Thank you, Carmen.